everyone, and welcome to Hit and Hustle from IrishSportsDaily.com. I am your host, Greg Flamong, and with me, as always, is Jamie Uyama, Mr. Jamie University. Uh, it is Tuesday, June 27th, and we've got a mailbag, Jamie. We, we, we put the questions out to the people, and they've uh, they've given us their uh, their questions, the things they want to talk about. And it's funny, man. Like I We, we did a vibe show, I don't know, a couple, couple weeks ago. And uh, we said the vibes were kind of weird. And I think th- that's confirmed by the kind of questions that we got. Like, everything is kind of like, is Marcus Freeman going to be on the hot seat? And, like, what's going on with recruiting and stuff? So, it, which is fine. Like, I, I I think we can talk it through, and there's no problem with that. But it just kind of shows, like, where everyone's mind is. So um, that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to talk about that today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If this is your first time listening to the show, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And please hit the notification bell so you know we're going live and you never miss a show. If you want the audio version of this podcast, you can click on the description or links in the description below of this on YouTube. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for for being here. Jamie, how are you? I'm good. As you can see, I'm holding a microphone. This is a different microphone. I was tired of the issues with the other microphone. And like I explained to Greg too, for whatever reason, it's like a stream yard thing of, of what the the mic connecting uh and how it how it works with Streamyard compared to the other podcast things that we use which seems to be fine but you know what so hopefully if you turn in today there's gonna be no problems hopefully no problems yeah it's good though like it's always good to get the troubleshooting stuff out uh during the off season right because once the season comes people don't really have a tolerance for that right uh, so that's good. Oh, the, Tyler, Tyler Hack says the lighting looks better on your end, Jamie. So good job by you. You're in a different room. I think I'm in a different in, room today. Yeah. Different room. Uh, Rob, you know what? The vibes are improving. Rob Bosniak says new mic, new vibes. Um, yeah. Joseph Steining, uh, the two shows from last week on a long drive. It was tough. It's tough, man. And honestly, like we feel so bad. We feel so bad about it. And, uh, but it's come up before, right? Like last year, um, we just had a bunch, like we had a, we had like a couple shows where it was like the, my audio was bad and the, the connection wasn't good, but that's like, you know, it's just the way life is sometimes, man. So we're, we're going to move on from that stuff. Um, and we've got a good show for everybody, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about esqclothing.com, uh, from Ga Wang, Notre Dame alum, Ga Wang. He's, uh, he's got the bamboo dress shirts. Everyone should check them out. We've talked about them. We talk about them every show, Jamie, and they stay the same. They're still breathable. They're still light. They still feel amazing. They're still wrinkle resistant, odor resistant, machine washable. Great product. Super duper. Someone brought up the price. Um, someone brought up the price the other day on the show. They're, 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 look, no lie. They're, they're pricey, right? But the thing about dress shirts like this is like every time you go out, it, it, you go to like, let's say a wedding, you go to a wedding and you, or you go out to a nice dinner or something like that. And you see someone in just like a smashing outfit, right? Like, and they just look good. And you're like, man, I got to do that. Well, to do that, you, you, you got to pay for it, right? You got to pay for it. And, and that's, that's the way it is. And and the thing is, it's like the reason that the, the reason it costs so much is because it's worth so much. And that's the thing, Jamie, it's worth it. Right. So you, you and, and look, we're, we're throwing out promos all the time. Hopefully you caught the um, the Father's Day promo that that guy had for 20 percent off. If not, there will be another one coming. You want to wait for that. That's fine. But I highly recommend go to esqclothing.com, Upgrade your shirt game. Be the guy that everyone is talking about. Be the guy who someone else sees and says, I want to be that guy. Be that guy. Just like um, and you, you, you can't put a price on comfort. You know, when, uh, and, and I'll say this too. And, you know, I was actually talking to someone specifically who, uh, they're from the South and, uh, they have to, they're uh, someone who has to wear, um, you know, suits every yeah. day to work. And I, I think one of the things is if you're from the South and your place and, and, and it's quite humid, you're going to want those bamboo shirts, man. Uh, cause it, it, it's going to, it's going to pay off in the long run, uh, because you're going to probably sweat through some of those other ones, but it's light, it's feel, it's, it's good. What, what can you do? Like you, you just, you want to be able to be comfortable, uh, especially if you got to wear a suit every day. So I, I mean, it's worth the investment. Yeah. 
uh, Zach Davis is bringing up your uh, show yesterday on Rick's Report. Uh, Jamie, uh, your show on Rick's Report was excellent, by the way. Uh, so good job by you. Good job by Chris on that show. Um, Thanks, it, Zach. It was really good. They they, they really uh, get into the nuts and bolts of like positions and what you need to do. Um, it's pretty. I, I don't want to say highbrow, but they they nerd out a little bit, right? You guys you guys get into it. Um, I love the safety talk. I love it. It's just like, the, you know, so much love for the safeties and how hard it is to play. Really appreciated that segment of the show. So I w- recommend everyone checking out Rick's report. Um, it came out yesterday. It's really good. It's a really good show. All right. Um, oh, John Erickson. Let's, let's throw this comment up there since it's kind of like a mailbag show. Uh, why is it the same people who say recruit rankings services are trash at worst and lazy research at best? agonize over the same rankings when discussing pending Notre Dame recruits. That's true. That's the thing. Uh, I, I mean, I think there's, I think there's just some people. Um, and I don't think this is, this isn't just Notre Dame fans. I don't it's think everybody. That, yeah. Everybody. Um, I think that, uh, there's a lot of people who <laughs> there, there's some people who are overly optimistic and I would say, I mean, you'll find that in, in any kind of fan base, right? Where you see they're a little bit too optimistic. Every three star is a hidden gem, and every uh, you know four star is like this is the stud we needed. Yeah. And then there's other people who are like, yeah, this guy he's highly rated, but like, what about his offer list? And then there's other people who are like, ah, yeah, you know the uh, well the recruiting ranks are tra-. like everybody's got their kind of own flow of how they do it, and sometimes it depends on the day. I mean, yeah. because I mean, we've seen different people in here that were like, wow, this guy's really he's feeling it today. He's, he's you know, not not to name any names, but there's definitely s- some people here that are super optimistic some days and then they come in hot the other days. I don't know. I just think it goes it goes with it sometimes with. Um, I, 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 th- I think it's one of those things where. I think I think it's fair R- recruiting rank is they, they're not perfect. Uh, but chances are, if you recruit well, you're going to do better uh, on the field. That's that's a fair assessment. It, it's proven to be correct. So um, I think when people complain about uh, rankings overall, I think overall you can complain about it. And I think, but it's always open for discussion of how you want to discuss what, uh, you know, what's a good ranking or who's who's the most accurate or uh how you're going to look at it because it's it's always something that should be debated right that's the whole point of it yeah um so yeah that's uh that's interesting uh xander is not here today and um which makes sense because notre dame picked up uh bronte johnson who's a four star (laughs) yeah Yeah. top 200 player so he won't be on the show today uh i'm just making a joke but um uh, Jason Smith is asking, uh, what was the show Jamie was on that they nerded out? Uh, search if you go to Apple Pod, search Rake's Report. It'll be there. You'll find it. Yeah, the, or Spotify or wherever. or Spotify yeah, or wherever. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's on wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's you can find that. It's the last show they did. So um, that'll be on there. All right, Jamie, let's uh, let's let's get going. Let's just start start with the questions, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, here we go. I need to I need to blow this up here because I can't uh, see. Here we go. All right. Uh, this is from, uh, Drew Brennan, 77. And first of all, shout out to Drew Brennan. He did some really good, uh, lacrosse, lacrosse coverage for one foot down this last year. He was his first year doing it. The coverage was really good. So kudos to him on that. Um, all right. He says, love hit, hit and hustle. Great work. Thank you very much for that. Um, so there's a long thing here about, uh, he watched the pivot, uh, the podcast that Marcus Freeman did, um, with, with, with those guys. And, um, he, so he's basically making the point that like, he, the, the way that Marcus Freeman represented himself and the things they were talking about, he would love his son, his son to be a Notre Dame football player. Right. Uh, and so, you know, given that uh, context with the results we've seen in recruiting this year uh, and as brought up that none of our uh, 2025 quarterback prospects visited Notre Dame this summer, where do you think the disconnect is basically? Um, and so this is kind of like in the same vein of like, you know, KVA and Justin Scott, and uh, because right now it sounds like KVA may be trending away. Um, but that, you know, time will tell on that one, we'll see. But Justin Scott, there's not a lot of juice there. Um, uh, Carter Nelson, I don't know if that's going to work out right. 
And so there's there's some uh, Eliza rushing didn't work out. So there's some kind of like high profile guys who are not uh, are not trending to Notre Dame, right? And who like Deuce Knight, like wh- what's that situation, right? He's talking about 2025 20, quarterbacks. Um, so I, I think there's like you know Caleb Beasley shut down his recruitment as well. So Jamie, to to what to the extent do you think there is a disconnect right now? What do you think it is? What where do you what do you think is going on? Like there's just last year there was a lot more um, juice with recruiting. There was a lot more excitement. There was a lot more going on. Notre Dame was in with a lot more high profile, you know, prospects, and um, that hasn't been the case this year. There's been a lot of like a lot of their four star players are um, speaking of recruiting rankings like below the composite top two hundred. Um, so where 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 do you think the uh, what what do you think the uh, the disconnect is right now? Well, I think one of the things that probably people haven't taken enough into account is that Marcus Freeman's in a different role now. Uh, so when you're the head coach, and it's not to say he's not active, he is very active, right? And he's he's definitely engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you are um, when you're the DC, uh, you're more active with it because that's more of your focus because right i mean he's not doing uh all this other stuff that he's having to do uh you know as the head coach and i'll make all these other decisions just like how he's less involved with the defense now right um so that's definitely part of it because i think if you look at the that 2020 um the 2023 class right that they signed a lot of that class, especially the start of it, were relationships that were already being built by Marcus Freeman when he started out as the defensive coordinator. So mm-hmm. you look at guys like Christian Gray, Drake Bowen, uh, Jaden Osbury. These guys were like Freeman guys before they were yeah. anything else. Right. So I think that's part of it. And I mean, I think you can also say too, like, I mean, Al Golden is definitely not the dynamic recruiter that Marcus Freeman is. So that's part of it. Like, you know, that's, you're definitely not, you don't hear Al Golden as a guy who's coming in and, and um, winning over people like, uh, like Marcus Freeman is. And Marcus Freeman was previously in that role. Right. So yeah, that's part of it. I think with some of the the guys on, on, on defense to be sure. Um, I think some of the 2025 quarterback stuff, I mean, I certainly, I don't think it's good that they didn't get any of those guys on campus Mm -hmm. in saying that. Okay. So Deuce Knights basically said like his, he's got a top two of Tennessee and Notre Dame really. Right. So, and Deuce Knight is, seems to be pretty clearly like the number one guy for, for Notre Dame at Mm -hmm. this point. Right. Yeah. So if, if they land Deuce Knight, and Deuce Knight has also been, I, I mean, he's he's done a ton of seven on seven stuff. He's been he's been active, so it's not like he's been like and taking a ton of other visits to other places. He's been doing football stuff, right? So mm-hmm. I think that'd be different if it's like, man, he's taking all these other visits, but he's not coming back to ND. I, th- yeah. I think that's a little bit different. And ultimately, if they end up with Deuce Knight then people are going to be like, yeah, like that's good job. Good job by you. Right. Like, like you did, you did what you're supposed to. Um, It it would have been better if they, if they had more 2025 quarterback prospects on campus. Um, And I don't know how much like say like Marcus Freeman would be responsible for that. Because I mean, Gino Gadouli has got to be really heavily involved in that too. Um, I don't know. I, I would say I, I think if I had to say the one disconnect, I think people, I, I think just about everybody here, I, I would be shocked if there's people listening to this or watching this right now that aren't heavily rooting for Marcus Freeman to succeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not just because it's like they love Notre Dame and they're rooting for Notre Dame. He's a likable guy. He's yeah. a likable guy. He's a genuine guy. And then that definitely comes across if if anyone had watched that pivot. Um, if you watch the video or you listen to the podcast and that's how he comes off all the time because that's who he is, right? That's who he is. And that's, that's something that has been, uh, evident since the day that he came to Notre Dame as as an assistant, right? So I I think that's something that, um, 
and I think some of that is, is, is there's there's a little bit less of that now because he's the head coach, right? And yeah. he can't be quite as active as he was. And maybe that's something where um, – he needs to maybe that's something a, a process of, of being a head coach where he has to step back and say look i got to do more with this relationships with some of these guys to get back to where we're at and or i need to get you know i i need to get on my coaches to to have better relationships with these guys too and maybe that's part of the process that but that'd be the one thing that kind of sticks out to me and this is a great question by the way drew yeah yeah it's it's tough because it's I, I do think like I think there's a lot to this. Like there does something feels off to me. And I don't and I don't know what it is. Tangent. Like I don't. And and but something does. Like why? Like, okay, like uh Kingston Vilamuasa, right? Like you know, talking to Matt and Christian about them, and they've reported this too since then. So it's not like you know, they, they didn't put this out there and other people don't know this. Like they were like Notre Dame feels good. Like Notre Dame feels like they're in the lead and that sort of thing. But it's like, but he has to go to Ohio State. And the thing about these visits in the summer, especially, is like they they want those guys, the guys they are pushing for, like they want commitments on the visit. And I mean, look at what happened with Paul Mankey, right? They wanted a commitment on the visit, and they felt like they were going to get it. And then he went to Duke, and it was like dropped. Right. Like they, so they want these visits. So like the fact that for whatever reason, the, the visits didn't resonate with a lot of the guys, like, cause at the, at the start of summer, Jamie, like a start of like the, the, the official visits right in June, it was like the first weekend went really well. And then every weekend after that was kind of like, man, I don't know. Like with the exception of Bradley Shaw, it was just like everyone after that was just kind of like, I don't know about this. You know, and Bronte Johnson was a little bit different because that was like if 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 he had everybody been cleared, knew as that was happening. If, as if soon he as, had been yeah. yeah, if he had been cleared like prior to this, he probably would have been in the class. He would have been in the class long right. before. Yeah, right. So so that was a little bit different, but like just they just didn't have that those huge visits, and then they didn't have any visits last weekend, which they could have. And you you and Mike talked about this on Power Hour yesterday, like. Was it a mistake? I don't know, but it just seems weird to punt on a on official visit weekend. It does. Um, I, I think you know what you have to look at all of these kind of things, and I'm sure they do, right? I'm sure right, they do. Look at, you you have to look at all these kind of things. Like it, this month has not gone well for Notre Dame. Yeah. So they have to look at why. It's right. like, well, we didn't have a big enough board. Or we missed on this guy or whatever, right? Or we thought this was was happening here. Like, did Notre Dame uh, – and, and this is something that w we brought up on on, on um, Power Hour as well, so I don't want to just kind of go over it again. But, it, it, like, did Notre Dame really think they were going to get Elijah Rushing when he didn't come in the spring? Yeah. Like, he didn't come. Like, he didn't come. He went to other places, right? Like, so when – when that didn't happen, I was like, what is all this talk about Notre Dame is like, oh, Notre Dame is a front runner from like, then why didn't he come? Like, yeah, I mean, if he really wanted to, he would have, he would have came and then that would have all set up. But it's like, very rarely does a guy like, that's why with, with a guy like Kingston, um, he had a couple visits canceled in the spring but then th then still was like i gotta get up there made it up for the spring game so i mean notre dame might not ultimately get him but it, it wasn't because this guy wasn't interested or they weren't in contention for him but it was like with rushing a guy like rushing was like were they even really that in contention for him so and because of that like you have to be able to know your board and be like i don't think i don't like our chances of rushing we got to get more defensive ends on campus or we got to push for whatever and and they might recover fine we'll, we'll see what happens and they still i mean they might get kva right they they still right. might they might get kva and if they get kva bradley shaw and gerby lambert people will be like well i mean it did go pretty well right but I mean, you got to wait and see and they could lose all three so that's that's the thing and they don't have enough 
they're they're not at a point too where if they lose all those guys, I mean, it does make the class a lot more disappointing. They 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 don't land enough of those top tier guys, and I I think that's important. And I'll just reiterate too, like I think if if Marcus Freeman was the defensive coordinator and linebacker coach, and I think they probably they probably would have closed on KVA. You know, they probably would have closed on KVA because he would have already had this like relationship and not to say he doesn't have a relationship with now, but it's like he's beaten James Laurinaitis one-on-one for a recruit. If it's like both those guys are going up, but now yeah. it's like this big thing, oh, James Laurinaitis or whatever. It's like, I mean, Marcus Freeman could mop the floor with him if they were really going head to head, but they're not, you know? So it, it's a, cause it's a different dynamic. And it's Ohio state too. Yes. You know, like it, it's, he's at Ohio state. I don't like if Lord, James Laurinaitis was the GA at uh, at Michigan State. I don't. No, they're not getting it. No, you know, not so getting like it. it's yeah. <laughs> like it's he wouldn't even he wouldn't even visit. He wouldn't. Yeah, even they've visit. always yeah. got they've always gotten good linebackers. Yeah. So uh, uh, people are think are making too much of the James Laurinaitis thing. <laughs> he's he's at a good like Notre Dame has lost recruits to them quite frequently. You know, so that's that's kind of the disconnect. Um, which with KVA like. I, I and, and you know a lot of people weren't happy with Matt's update, but you know the information is the information. It, it's really hard, and I don't envy Matt for this because they do have to. He does have to put an update on this stuff. But th- you're talking about real time uh, kind of feelings of where a particular player is thinking at a certain given time, like in time in uh, a given moment. It, 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 the way he felt Sunday could be totally different today, Tuesday it could just change his mind, you know, like it, it just, ah, I was really feeling it, but then I, I decided, you know, USC, oh, I, w- I was off. Like he was off USC and then he was back on USC. Like these things changed. And so Matt has to give an update on Sunday at 8 PM. Right. Th- that information could change. And I, and, the, and a perfect example is that is Paul Mankey Sunday at 8 PM after he visited in the class, he's coming. And then like Tuesday, it's like he's not coming and he's probably going to go to Duke and Notre Dame may not even be recruiting him anymore. Like that's how quickly it can change. So um, I know, you know, a lot of people are talking about that Notre Dame could be third for him right now. Third, second, it, it kind of doesn't matter, right? It it really doesn't. It's Who just cares unless it you get them. Like, it seems like there are three teams in it for him. And that's what it is. He's considering three, first, second, third, kind of doesn't matter it is that you need to you need to land the recruit well the other the the other thing that doesn't matter is it doesn't matter until he says i'm announcing right i'm announcing or he just announces right or if you see a bunch of crystal balls come in for him or whatever um i mean for the people that i i I think i I can't believe people haven't kind of figured it out yet with the crystal balls but most of the time it's because the kid already committed and they've, uh, heard. they've heard they've they've heard that they, they've they've got the notice that the kid yeah. committed and they're like oh a bunch of crystal balls came in seven crystal balls the kid committed it's just not public right okay. like i'm i'm not saying if there's like one crystal ball here or there that's a different situation or whatever or if it's like way long out in advance but most of the time when there's like you, a whole bunch of crystal balls came in it's because that kid committed right so that hasn't happened yet so until then, you see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, next question. Uh, DG1976. Uh, is it possible the staff isn't handing out more offers and invitations in June because they have enough confidence in their fall evaluations and ability to pick up quality players who are late bloomers or who have been overlooked to keep a few slots open going into the season? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think that's the way they look at it. Like, um, uh, I think it's a, that's a little bit uh, overly optimistic to think like that. Like, I mean, I think they would prefer to have KVA and Shaw and Gerby Lambert, and they would have got Elijah Rushing, and then Caleb they could Beasley. still Caleb Beasley, whatever, and then they could still get in on somebody else or whatever, and. Uh, I mean, if they want to kind of over recruit a position, they can, if there's somebody who's just that good, um, you just can't plan to have like, I mean, I don't know how many more they're going to actually sign in the class. Cause I don't think they'll just take anybody just to take anybody, 
but that was always like a problem with with quite a number of Brian Kelly classes where all of a sudden it's like, man, they're low on numbers. So they got to take a bunch of guys. And then they end up taking guys at the end that um, were iffy, you know, got guys that were, were real projects. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't think that um, I, I think they did a really good job last year. If you look at, there was a bunch of guys that they ended up signing uh, and then guys that they were kind of in contention for, so like other guys that they were contention for, like Caleb Barnes, Tayshawn Lyons, yeah, uh, you know Brandon Hill, like those are really good evals, right? And it yeah. was good to get get in on them, but that was already adding to like they had a good June and they 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 had a bunch of like they ended up getting a lot of closing on the corners that they wanted and Christian Gray and Micah Bell and they they did well in, in those official visits and then still did that. And that's the way you should approach it. So I, I don't think it's like a thing where they're leaving these spots open. I think they really need to. Um, they they wanted they wanted to close and, and they haven't yet. Yeah, and I think they. I think in this next eval for them, like they need to shore up position. So like wide receiver, I think they need to start looking at other wideouts because a I think they could use a fourth period, and b like what happens if. Isaiah Canyon starts looking around or Mikey Gilbert. I think Cam Williams is pretty solid. Like, he seems very yes. solid, but it's possible. Like Canyon could just start looking around, right? Like he's kind of been talking about it a little bit. That's died down. Um, but it, that could come up. As just as an example, him just, or Gilbert, you and never you just know. Don't know. And you can't be, he's from Georgia. You yeah, never you know. Just I just you can't be in a situation where it's like, like uh CJ Williams, where it's like, man, this, this feels not good, and we are in a bad kind of in a bad spot if he leaves because we haven't really talked to anyone. They need to start building those relationships like right now. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I feel about that. All right, next question: Fifth quarter Irish and fifth quarter Irish is going to have a few here. He asked a bunch, so uh, he's going to have a few coming up. Uh, based on what you know about the current roster, who would be your number one punt returner and number one kick returner? Who um I think I would go kick returner. I'd probably go with Tyree again, just as of right now. Um, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be open and it shouldn't be open for a competition, but if a guy is taking a kick back in a game and and I don't know about everybody else, that guy's the number one guy until somebody else takes it from him for me. Um and I'm not saying there might not be better options on the roster, uh, but that's how I, I would view it. Um, punt returner, like I, I like I don't think it should be Matt Salerno. He's the one guy who's got uh, experience, but I think that's just wide open. I don't even know. I, I couldn't even tell you who would be yeah. the, the number one guy at this point uh, for it. And I, I do think, uh, and someone mentioned him in the thing, and we've brought it up a bunch of times. Micah Bell is to, by far the most intriguing guy to me, uh, yeah. like out of the freshmen, because um, he's got obviously just electric speed. Um, you know, Jeremiah Love is also, I mean, he can fly, right? So maybe he's a kick returner guy. Like, um, I think they're going to have options, and we it'll be interesting to kind of see uh, what they do there. Also interesting to see if, um, you know, what, approach marty biagi has yeah with it compared to um you know brian mason who obviously did a fantastic job but uh i would say in the the return game kick return game is isn't as big as it used to be it's not the days of the rocket like there's way more ones that go into the end zone there's right. a lot more strategy with it there's not like you know stupid um coaches kicking it twice to the rocket you know what i mean like mm -hmm. uh so that that's not happening as much anymore so um I don't know. I, I don't be interesting. What do you think, Greg? Uh, so I, I, Jason Smith stole my punt return. I was going to say great house and he put it on here. So I'm kind of mad about that. I think he's good. I think that's a good one because a he's, he's sure handed. He did it in high school and he was very good at just like, you could just tell when someone is confident catching punts. And, and so there's that part of it. There is history of like freshmen being punt returners, right? Um, 
So it's not like that's unheard of. And he has the same kind of Brandon Joseph, like, I'm going to get you 10 yards. I'm taking a first down that we don't have to get, right? Doesn't have to break it per se, but it's like, I'm going to get you that 10 yards. And he's a bigger guy. So it's like, I think it's a little different for even gunners where it's like, man, I got to, I got to run down and kick like this 200 pound thick six, two guy. I'm going to run into him rather than, you know, five eleven, one eighty, 180 Matt Salerno. Like it's just different. They're mentally it's different. Um, so I like that. And I think the Tyree thing is correct. Unless Michael Bell comes in and it's just like, has a complete feel for it, which is possible. I would I would go with Tyree because there is a decision making aspect to the position now that um, that it, it is a factor when to tank it out when to uh, when to uh, take a knee fair catching like all those things there th- that is a part of the that game and because it comes out to the twenty five yard line now it just a lot of the time a fair catch is just a better way to go so um. um. But- I, I just to add to your great house point, um, which I think is that that's a good choice, an interesting one. You know, shout out to Jason Smith for mentioning him as well, too. But um, I think there's something to the fact that he's also played in a ton of big games yeah. with big crowds in Texas. And so if you're going to get a freshman to do it, that would be a pretty good choice because he's, I don't think he's going to be like, Oh my gosh, I'm so into the first, you know, punt return of his career in Notre Dame stadium. You know, they're playing Ohio State. I don't think he's going to like squeeze it extra tight. Like, yeah. like s- some others might, you know? So um, I like it from that aspect too. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good point, man. Those, uh, those Texas crowds, they're big. They play in, they fill legit stadiums, you know, like sometimes you get a high school game and it's like, oh, we're playing like, like out here. They like, oh, we play at the Coliseum, right? That's great. It's like, there's like 10,000 people there, right? So it's, you know, but like Texas, they'll fill like 40, 50,000 seat stadiums. So um, that's, that's a really good point there. Um, moving off this one a little bit, let's, uh, let's get into a question from David Lowe. Uh, what's the highest ranked possible class for Notre Dame this year? Hypothetical, they land Gerby and one of Scott or KVA. I'm saying around 12 to 15, too many three stars and top 300 kids. I would think it's – that would probably be a top 10 class. If you land Gerby Lambert, he's a top 50 guy or at least top 100 guy. Scott is a five-star. Um, so if, if, like, if you land Justin Scott, that, that's going to be a big deal because the other part too is like Cam Williams – He'll probably go up to a five star at some point. Like I think he'll go up, and uh, and I, I don't see CJ Carr dropping. He could just stay static. I don't see him dropping. He could go up too. So, you know, I, I think it would be around top ten if that if that um, you know stirs your drink a little bit there, David. I'm not sure, but um, that's where I think it could end up. What, what about you, Jamie? I think around top 10 would be my guess. Uh, But it also a lot depends on, I think there's guys that Notre Dame has in the class right now that could move up quite a bit. Uh, And do those guys move up? Uh, You know, how far do they move up? Um, How's that going to look? But I I will say too, that that I don't know what it is in terms of, um, I don't, of how many guys they have at uh, who are going to like the Under Armour game or or to the yeah. uh, to the 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 All American game in San Antonio right now, but that kind of stuff it, it matters, right? Like because it doesn't matter in terms of whatever. Like it, it does it, prediction of success. No, who gives a crap about that? But I'm just talking about in terms of rankings because there's bias in there and if those guys have guys there they get and then they get a chance it's like one of the reasons why like shane simon moved up a ton because he went to the that game and they were like oh he had a good week well now he's like a like they had i think 24 7 like a top 50 kid and he really wasn't a top 50 kid but he got a chance to do that and 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 then got that bump because of it so um that kind of thing matters um so it all, it all depends, right? I, I always say it's, it's you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You, got, you just got to kind of uh, figure it out. And uh, 
drunk Vigo, who always, always has the just this guy's like never really paying attention to the conversation. He's always just making other observations about what's going on. So hey, I appreciate it. But uh, this hat is um, uh, it's it's a Tokyo Giants hat. So you you Murray Giants. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Tokyo yeah. Giants. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, Mr. Baseball. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, what was your favorite uh, all star game that Ben Morrison played in? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I just didn't. So it, it I'm not saying like, the, yeah, dude, they do have a lot of guys there, but it's just like one of these things where, I mean, you can find, you can find a ton of guys who didn't go to those games or who didn't go to camps and whatever, like famously, like the Bosa brothers who were, I'd say pretty good players, like didn't care about any of those camps. Didn't care. I don't, I'm not, I don't even know if Bosa's, he might've went to those games. I'm not sure. Uh, but they didn't care about it. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't care about the ranking. They were just like, uh, yeah, I play for St. Thomas Aquinas and I'm a stud, you know? So it's like, okay, they're like five star, you know, like it, it, it's just, and they end up being top five picks or whatever. Right. So it's just, if you're good, you're good. Yeah. All right. Next one from uh fifth quarter Irish. Uh, also a team question. Is there an underclassman on defense that could be a lot more impactful than we might, ex- might be expecting this fall? Uh, he singles out Christian Gray, Jalen Sneed, uh, Nolan Ziegler, Josh Burnham, Aiden Gobira, uh, Tyson Ford, Jaden Osbury, Jaden Mickey. Could you see any of those guys forcing their way onto the field? Yeah, I definitely could. I could see all of those guys. All yeah. of them uh, forcing I mean, their way. Well, not all of them at once. All of them have a chance. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, I don't see all of these guys playing because chances are if all those guys are playing, that means there's like probably major injuries and that wouldn't be good. But yeah. Um, I think Mickey is like, I don't even think he has to force his way. Like, I think I, it, the Mickey or Sneed, like they kind of fit into that. Yeah. Like they're um, playing. <laughs> they're playing. Um, I mean, Christian Gray might be a guy. Um, I mean, Ziegler is a guy that I think has a shot. I mean, all these guys have a shot. Um, Burnham would be the one guy that I think has, is, not getting as much buzz, but could get a lot more buzz by the end of, um, you know, as you kind of enter into the season. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's going to be t- some of these other, like Gobera, I could see too. Um, but it's like, they have, uh, Javante Jean Baptiste and they have, uh, Nana there at end. So it almost would take like an injury. You know, for or he's just that good. So it's like a shot, but it's probably it's just harder when there's things like that because um can you be someone who's reliable all the time? Because the one thing about Nana, he hasn't shown that he's got the uh you know the real like, kind of pass rush upside, but he does his job. Yeah. You know, he does his job and he does it at a pretty high level. So um I think that is the kind of thing that like it's tough to beat out a guy like that. Yeah. I I think Tyson Ford is one. I I think he he could make a couple like impact plays. Um, He can make a couple impact plays and uh, it's just like, he's suddenly it's like, he's got to get more snaps. He's got to get more snaps, got to get more snaps. And then by the time Notre Dame's in like those big ones, uh, Notre Dame's in those big games, you know, that's when he's starting to, uh, those guys also get hurt a lot too. The defensive tackles, it's, it's a, it's a tough position. So, I mean, chances are you're going to need five DTs really to, to kind of play. And I, I would say there's a good chance that he's got, a, could be the fifth DT. Don Merriweather is in the chat. Thank you, sir, for being here. The barbecue master general, uh, putting his hat in the ring for, uh, Nolan Ziegler. So there you go. I mean, that- I, Definitely, I think he's he's got a shot. I, I I just think it's right now too with linebacker. I think there's so much up in the air. Um, and uh, and heard nothing but good things as in addition to what I saw from him in the spring too. So that's good. Yep. So that's uh, that's a good call. So I think we've uh, we we a lot of players, a lot of players. We uh, we yeah. named there a lot of talent. Um, yeah. This is another one from fifth quarter Irish. Do you think Notre Dame will run more two tight end sets, two running back sets? or three wide receiver sets, uh, standard personnel grouping. Uh, and he goes on to list a bunch of stats uh, at Wake Forest. He completed at least 35 passes to five different uh, 
wide receiver, all wide receivers. So 35 passes, wide receivers. Uh, so what do you think, Jamie? What, what do you think Notre Dame's main, uh, what do you think Notre Dame's main formation is going to be next year? My guess is it'll probably be a um, 11 and 12 will be. Uh, so that's, you know, one back, two tight ends, which would be two receivers. And then the other, you know, 11 is one back, one tight end and uh, um, three receivers. Th that'll be pretty split. Like I, I'm guessing that'll be like pretty even. Um, I, d I think because they lost digs, I think that they might not do as much of the um the two uh the 21 right the yeah. two back sets yeah. because i think uh that was like something one can kind of keep those guys happy and i think he's kind of fits that more uh and pick up because tyree's not there anymore either and tyree right. was always kind of like there but less as a back but more as like as a receiver thing so um i m my guess is we won't see that much 21 this year you might see just like Every once in a while, like, you know, they they just sprinkle it in to kind of get something going. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. Uh, this Jadarian price is 100% stuff, by the way. I don't know what to make of that yet. I guess we'll just wait and see when camp opens. Uh, you know, I don't know what kind of coverage we're going to get, but like, I think if ever, I, generally speaking, we get the first five periods. So if he's out there like doing stuff, not in, maybe it's like, is he in a red Jersey and all those things. But then at the same time, like Logan Diggs had a red Jersey and he played against Ohio state. So I don't know. That'll be interesting in terms of 21 personnel. Uh, but yeah, I just, uh, I, I think we'll see a lot more 11 this year because of the Tyree stuff. I think he's, I think they want him to be out on the field a lot um and like and this so, said because of hartman and because of hartman and, and like Jaden Jaden greathouse too like he i think they're gonna want to get him on the field so uh i think i think you're right i think we're gonna see a lot more 11 a lot less uh 12 um last one from fifth quarter irish do we anticipate a heavy rpo passing attack that gets the ball to whiteouts a lot or something a bit more balanced like 65 percent wide receiver 15 tight end 20 percent running back uh i think that we're gonna be a see a ton of rpos I think there's a ton of RPOs. Um, who they're throwing it to? Slots, wideouts. I don't know. What do, what do you think, Jamie? I think there's going to be a lot of very heavy RPO offense this year. I think it's going to be way more RPOs. It's mostly predicated on uh, Hartman's ability to throw those RPOs. Everyone's going to be like, oh, slow mesh. Well, no, they're not going to be doing that. They're just He's, he's just going to be reading it and throwing RPOs, much like you saw from him in the spring game. Uh, when he, we did yeah. some of that, right. So, um, I think you're, you're going to see quite a bit of that. And I, I would say first week against Navy a lot, cause they're going to try to blitz and yeah, then they're yeah, going to yeah. be like, yeah. Oh, you want to try to, you want to try to have all these, you throw all these run blitzes at us. You want to try to throw in all these extra bodies up here Well, we're going to burn you, uh, outside and you try to do that. And then I think. They'll have to back off, and then Notre Dame will eventually run down the throats, I think. Uh, so my prediction, uh, Notre Dame's going to put 40 up on Navy this year. Yeah, and I think that – I think fans will be thinking slow mesh because Sam Hartman is so comfortable holding it and yeah. waiting. You know, like he will actually read it. You know, it's not – like it'll be pre-snap, yes, but also it'll be post-snap. Like he is very comfortable – with the ball in the belly, obviously, and and making a read and going that way. Um, I think there's a good chance we see a lot more downfield stuff with RPOs. You know, like I, I don't think it'll just be get the ball uh or do a quick little thing. There'll be some of that, but I think they'll be they won't be afraid to push it either. So um I think just, that'll be the one thing. Go ahead. Yeah, just one other thing because I, we can't give Urban Meyer any credit for something that he definitely didn't do. Drunk Vigo, he he was listening to the actual conversation this time. Uh, Urban Meyer did not invent the RPO, <laughs> like not even close. Uh, I mean, he was, you know, he's a guy who did some innovative stuff. Uh, you know, wasn't Mike like, Leach doing this in like '99, something like that? You can go back, and there's like, um, you can find different guys who had, who had influence in it, but it's like one of those things where like rich Rodriguez was, is, is one of the guys who's considered like, um, the zone read, 
right? Yeah. And it was like an accidental thing or whatever, right? So there's there's all of these kind of things, but definitely like Urban wasn't a I don't even think Urban they were ever really heavy RPO when he was there, anyways. But uh, they did run RPO, but not too too crazy. It's just been a thing that's developed over time. I I don't I don't know who the the like the inventor. It was probably somebody in like a D two school that we've never heard of. Right, that's who probably invented it. Yeah. All right. Next question. Uh, Iris Bronx says, with Matt Freeman reporting that UA is a real possibility. Should Notre Dame consider disbanding the program? Um, I, I don't think that's going far enough. I, I think I think shuttering the doors to the the university at large is in play here. I'm telling you right now, if 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 they make the announcement and I'm not off somewhere like uh, at a tournament or something or off you know, like away, if I have time, like if I'm just at my house, I'm going to record a show. You don't have to. I, I said, Jamie, you don't have to come on. I'm not even going to ask you. I'm just going to say I'm doing it, and you're going to try to tell me not to, and I'm going to say no. I'm 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 going to vent to the people, and I'll be I'll be I'll be normal. I'll be fine, Jamie. I won't go crazy, but I'll be unhappy. It, it, I don't. I and honestly, like, I I don't even want to hear the spin about oh, you know. The largest uh, deal anyone ever got, whatever. Like I, Notre the UA already was a bad bet. Don't double down on your bad bet. It's bad. Go with Nike. Everyone wants it. You want it. I want it. Players want it. Coaches want it. Go with it. Do it. Just do it. Jamie. I just think it's short-sighted if they go with UA again. So I don't even if even if the money is that much bigger, it's just in the long term, it's not good for the athletes. <laughs> Definitely not good for the athletes. It's not good. It's, it's not good for the athletes. And I just think overall, um, you know, it, it, like if you do it because it's like, ah, we want to stay independent. Well, what happens if like these conferences fall apart and you have to uh, you know, because you want the money is is why you would want the you know, because you get that and it's like, oh, we don't need the Big Ten money because of that. It's like you might have to go to the Big Ten anyways, right? Because it's just how things shake out. So don't make those. I I hope it's Nike. We'll see what happens. I mean, unless it's like UA is going to build Notre Dame like new stuff, new everything. UA will build it. They will put their headquarters like their R and D, like next to the Goog or something. Like I don't know. It's the UA game is going to be held at Notre Dame Stadium. They're running these camps there. So like there has yeah. to be like way more benefits. Yeah. That and it, that it to, have and to I want to hear directly tangible. benefit that have to directly benefit Notre Dame or else if it's just money. I mean it can't be stock because the stock ain't going well. But like so it's got to be something else. So I I mean. I think I, I would have to think too that um, Notre Dame must be well aware that the perception wouldn't be good if they the stayed. The perception with would be bad. So, yeah. And unfortunately, so. you know, everyone knows that Jack Swarbrick's son works for them. And so I don't know what that means. Personally, I think that it has nothing to do with anything. But other people it just the perception is out there jamie it is a conflict of interest straight up and so that's it i, I don't want to freak out too much because it hasn't happened yet so but there will be a show everyone here there's 105 people listening there will be a show just be ready for that all right uh silverback says will coach freeman be on the hot seat in a negative way should notre dame not sign a top 10 class and lose a non-January first game as we likely won't have Hartman for that game. So essentially, let's say Notre Dame goes nine and three. Uh, don't make the New York six. Sam Hartman not playing in the game. Um, so that's what he's saying. So let's call it nine and three, and you lose in the Gator Bowl. Uh, and you have first of all, Hartman's playing in that game. By the way, he's okay. Not, well, let's uh, let's say they let's say they. they Whatever they lose the game, let's say they lose the game. Okay, who cares? He's playing. No, the but game. I no. The, the reason why I wanted to point that out is because, um, 
guys that are going to be like, I mean, if they're nine and three, that means Hartman didn't have a, a great year. Like he had an okay year, which also means that he's probably going to be like a sixth round pick or something like that. So guess what? He needs to get a stock up. He's playing in that game. You know, like that's, that's people have this perception, like all oh, these guys just want to get out. It's like, eh, no, I, I, the guys who really want to get their stock up still, like they're still playing in that game. Yeah. Well, either way, let's say they lose nine and four. Let's say nine and four, nine and four again. Okay. Lose the bowl game. Uh, do you think Marcus Freeman would be on the hot seat? I think you would not. You need to have a really great year three, kind of like Brian Kelly, right? Like how he had, uh, you know, underwhelming. For I don't think that if he had like a kind of similar year three that he's getting fired right after that. But I just it everything just goes bad because it just there would just be so much chatter and so much heat. Um, I don't know. Like I, I think yeah, you. There's so much is so much of it is perception of and and how they're doing it. So it's like it's one of those things where if it, it does go hand in hand, right? If you don't have if you if the class and right now it's not gonna be uh as good as 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 last year's class, I would say, right? So right. it's not gonna be good as last year's class. So if it's not as good as last year's class and then you have the same record. Yeah, there's going to be more heat on him. I don't know if that technically means hot seat, uh, but I mean, it could it could happen. But it's also like one of these things. It's like I hate talking about that kind of thing because it's like, well, what happens if they beat Ohio State and then, you know, and they're going on a run or whatever? It's like we don't know what's going to happen. You got to let the season play out. You got to yeah. let the season play out because – and also to the context of it, because just imagine too, imagine Sam Hartman gets hurt. Right. And then, and then they go nine and three and it's like, well, there is a different context to that. And that gets taken, that should get taken into account as well. And yeah. I know people will probably kill them because of the Buckner thing or whatever, but I'm just saying all there's all context to all of it. So it's like, what does that nine and three look like? Right. Um, if they have nine and three again, and they, lose like they lose to central michigan and they lose to whatever like those are kind of things that did get you on the hot seat right and yeah. it's like um all the kind of how that plays out all that kind of stuff matters i think too like w one thing that will definitely happen and, and just to, like I, I think what we're talking about is just like a disappointing season like uh, however it works out people are at the end of it people are disappointed i think what will happen which is like people will stop talking about, oh, Marcus Freeman looks good in this hoodie. No one, no one will care about that anymore. Like that's gone. Like all of that. I think a lot of people, you know, I, I, I don't think, I think those are the people that we know who talk, talk about. No, I don't think like, no one in this thing is, is too common. But, but what I'm that. saying is like, the, that will, there will be no more of that. Like, they'll, like, like what people will do is like, okay, the pivot, right? People watch the pivot. It's like, oh, that's like, like good. Like, I love the pivot. Like, a really like genuine guy. Like, people will stop talking about how he's genuine. Oh, and yes. All those other yeah. qualities and that. Sort Completely of agree with that. Yeah. Like, that is gone. And it's like, look, what's the deal with your defense? Like, what's the deal with like this recruiting situation? Like, people will look very harshly on all those things, right? And so that's where that's where it just the conversation just shifts. And that's – so it's not like you're on the hot seat, but, you, like, it's definitely you – know, we are now monitoring. You know, we are oh, monitoring the yeah. situation, right? And that's where I think um, – that's how it happens. And it's like you said, like, Brian Kelly, 8-5, and 8-5. and five. Like, no one was super excited about Brian Kelly going to 2012 and then went undefeated. So – that like that obviously helps, right? Like he went undefeated in year three. If he had gone eight and five again, like you better believe he's very much on the hot seat going into 2013, you know? So. Um, every, everything, it, it's all about wins and losses yeah. and, and about where it's going. So like Ty Willingham and people can, you know, go back and retroactively talk about how like, um, 
you know, there's there's a lot of people that like, you know, like uh, like a Mike Wilbon was really like stuck on like he didn't get a fair shot or whatever. Right. Well, they were bad in year three. Things are trending bad on the field and they're trending even worse in recruiting in terms of what he, he had done. And that's the kind of thing that matters. So it's like one of those things where it all has to be taken into context. It's like, well, you know, where's Notre Dame set up for how are they doing now and where they're set up for the future? And it's just all, all these things, but it all comes down to wins and losses. And believe me, last year, if, if Notre Dame didn't beat Clemson last year, he'd be on the hot seat right now. That's yeah. just how it is. That Clemson game got him a lot of goodwill. And now yeah. p- and people are still talking about it. But, well, now you play you play Clemson, USC, Ohio State, and yes, all the other games matter too, and you got to do well, whatever, right? But if you win two out of three of those games and you still finish as a 93, that's why it's how people perceive that. It's like, well, whatever, all that kind of stuff matters, right? And all that kind of stuff matters. And it's like, um, believe me, like that, that, the biggest thing for Brian Kelly, 12 and 0. Yeah, that was big, but he won that Oklahoma game in 2012. And that yeah. was huge for him. He needed yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, Javoski says, asks, how are we losing Scott to Michigan right now? Um, the only thing that's notable to me about Michigan, and this kind of goes into the, the, the conversation. Something's up. Something's off is, you know, it was Notre Dame and it was Miami. And it's like Miami's an NIL school, right? And then it's Georgia. And Georgia, like, kind of speaks for itself. Michigan is not an NIL school. And they are a Midwest school. So, like, that's interesting. I think they got, they dip into NIL. Let's they not dip. Well, no, no. So does Notre Dame, though. Yeah. Notre Dame dips. But it's like it's not like Miami. It's different. Yes, that's so true. like that's interesting. And I, I don't want to make too much of it because he, I don't know that he's going there. Right. And he, you know, he had a good visit. Shoot. He was going to re- he, he was going to commit to Notre Dame at one point. Like it, he had two great visits to Notre Dame in the spring. Everything was great. Right. And oh, he's coming up again. And then he did it, you know, so people have to wait wait on Michigan. Like just wait on that, right? They're they're trendy now, but let's see if it ends up there. But it's just that's interesting to me because you're talking about a Midwest school that is I don't know, Midwest okay, let's just stop it. I don't even want to talk about this just tomorrow it could be Miami. It could be. Tomorrow it, it totally I could be. I it's just like one of these things like and even if he commits to Michigan and it's something that we've talked about before, yeah, he's not all in for Michigan until it's done. So it's just like one for of those sure. things. It's like, no matter what, even if he commits to Notre Dame, it's not done. None of it's done. So no one should get worked up about it. I don't even like no disrespect to Trubosky because whatever he's, I know he's a guy who's like super invested in all of this stuff, but like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for Mich- if he chooses Michigan now. It doesn't matter if he chooses Ohio State now. It doesn't matter if he chooses Miami now. It doesn't matter if he chooses Notre Dame now. None of it matters because he seems to be a very impressionable guy. And like the wind has blown in several different directions for him. And typically when that happens, that's just you just never know where a guy is going to end up in the end. So let it play out. Let it play out. Like, why would you even sweat Michigan right now? Why would you even sweat anyone right now? All I can do is just keep fighting. And then hopefully in the end, you get them. And that's that's all that's all all you do. And even if he ends up at Michigan, I mean, to me, he's still the same guy where it's like, well, no matter where he goes, it's either going to be big, big boom or big bust. And that's that's the thing. And so, so to kind of answer the question there, to kind of summarize what Jamie is saying, is that it it seems that Notre Dame is losing him to Michigan because he visited Michigan. And there have been a lot of flavors of the week for him specifically. So that's the story. Not that it's Michigan, that it's it, that's the way he is, you know, apparently, right? Like, it, it, that's just a fact. 
there's been several flavors of the month with him. And so uh, that's that goes into why why are they losing him? Because he visited there. It, it All of this makes me think, uh, I don't know if this is going to happen. It's usually not how it goes. It's usually not how it goes. When it goes like this, it usually doesn't end up well for Notre Dame, which may not be the fault of, uh, you know, Al Washington. People will throw it on him, but. It's definitely um, not an Al Washington. This guy is not yeah. an Al it, Yeah. People, it's, this is not a guy that you would blame anyone for, no matter where he goes. Right. It's not like, no, no, um, like if Michigan looks like they have him now and then two days later he ends up, you know, committing to Miami, that has nothing to do with, uh, you know, Mike Elston at Michigan. It's, it's got, it's not his fault, right? It's no. just, who knows, right? You, you just have to let it play out with, it's so obvious with a kid like this, no. that it's just like, everything has changed. It's like, didn't people just think, oh man, Georgia, he's really liking Georgia now. It's like, well, I, now he's not right. But he still might sign with Georgia. Like you don't know. You don't know. I, I, I can't wait till signing day comes and he puts on the Oregon hat. It's going to be great. <laughs> that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Canadian. Uh, what is it? Canadian donor. What uncommitted 24, 24 players do you have your eye on as potential targets at Viper DT and offensive tackle as the fall approaches? I mean, uh, n- none really right now. And yeah. I thought about this before because, uh, well, one, they don't, they haven't, uh, they haven't expanded the board. Uh, they haven't. So it, it does seem like Viper, I think they're done. Right. I, I think that's pretty clear that they're done. They, they dropped Malachi Williams. Yeah. So that's, or they just, that's, yeah. That's so, bullshit. yeah. So, uh, I don't think, I mean, maybe there's somebody who could pop up that really, you know, interests them enough that they decide to go something, but probably not. And defensive tackle, I guess if they find out for sure they're out on Justin Scott, but I mean, even then they might not decide to because, you know, they landed more defensive tackle types in, in the previous class and offensive tackle. Like it is not a good class. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just say that again. It's not a very good class. I think. It, it's, you know, if they get Gerby Lambert, that's pretty, he's pretty much the board right now, unless yeah. they just make a decision because they already decided like they weren't like, you know, they weren't going to do they, like nothing was decided with like Grant Bricks were like, yeah, we're going to push hard for him. And some of these other guys too. Right. Cause they thought, okay, we're going to get Prescott and going to try to push for Lambert too. And I, I do think offensive tackle might be a position to watch in terms of, that might be a thing to watch in terms of a late bloomer because it's just, there's not that it's just the, the number of elite guys in this class. Um, very few. There's very few. Of them. Yeah. Uh, what I'm looking for are names at corner and if they're poking around at wide receiver, I think they need a fourth wide receiver. I do. And, uh, and I, and I want, and I think they need another corner. So I, I that's what I'm looking for. What what are those evaluations? I think you can get a good evaluation in senior year too. Um, so that's what I'm looking for there. Uh let's see, CHSFB 75. Uh he hasn't even started his senior year in high school, but CJ Carr is the favorite to be starting quarterback in 24, right? More serious. I hope we do not see Notre Dame hitting the portal to replace Hartman. Is Angeli or Minchie more likely to take the first snap of the 24 season? Um I have bad news for you. I think they will be taking a portal quarterback in 2024. I think the only way that doesn't happen is if Sam Hartman, for some reason, is missing games and and Jelly or Minchie comes in and kills it, like like uh, like Deshaun Kaiser in 2015, something like that, where he just like came in was great, and it's like okay, well then I guess we're settled. I think that's the only way. If if Sam Hartman plays every game this year, they're they're going to the portal. I think it's hundred uh, percent. I would say, I would say a high percentage. I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent because if they go, let's say they go um, 12 and one, they make the playoff, right? Uh-huh. With, with Sam Hartman. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the other thing where you're like, well, and, and, and they do like Minchie or Angeli. And they're like one of these guys, they think it's, it's got a chance to, to be uh, a guy 
they might go to the portal, but it might not try to get a Hartman type. You know what I mean? Like they might just be like, it, because it's all like the heat you feel too. It's like, well, you know, I feel good about it and I feel good about one of these other quarterbacks. And, you know, I, I, I think we're, the program's in a good shape, but it's like, yeah, you go nine and four or whatever. And it's like, yeah, we need to win big again. Like we got to get another big guy. Like that's, and, and that's really, you shouldn't be reactive like that, but that is how it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting point about if they did go 12 and one, like you would have, you feel like you would have a grace period to kind of go with. I, I, and first of all, I think Angeli is more likely just because he's been around longer, frankly. Um, but I, I don't think it's like super more likely. I just think if I had to pick one, I would pick him. Um, I, that's an interesting point. You know, just the idea that, okay, like we don't, we, we don't, I think if you start the path on not going to the portal, then you can stay on that path. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and, but don't you think that, I mean, I think Freeman has kind of like admitted it because they went to last year and they didn't have that experience and then it burned them. And because of that, that was yeah. kind of why they went after Hartman. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, he reacted to it. So that's why I kind of said that too. And for the people saying, Drake may in the thing. I mean, he's going to be in the league next year. He's probably going to be like the first or second pick in the draft. Probably the second pick in the draft. Pops McGee is on his daughter's tablet. Didn't miss the show. That's what I'm talking about right there. Everyone follow Pops McGee London's playroom on his daughter's tablet. Check it in on the Notre Dame mailbag. Hit the like button. Pops. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. I love you, Pops. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. Poster of the day right there. All right. Uh, oh, that's it. I guess we're done. All right, Jamie. Those are all the uh, all the questions. That was fun. I had a good time. I did not. I did not think that that was going to be the last one. All right. So I think that's good. Good show, Jamie. What is today? Tuesday. So we have another show it's coming Tuesday. up on Thursday. Another show coming up on Thursday. Um, we'll come up with a fun topic. We'll put it out to the people. Um, and uh, and we'll go there. Uh, Sam Anderson. Uh, Drake May is not a realistic option because he will be in the NFL after this year. So that's where he, he was asked. He, I think he was asking who's a realist. Don't know at this time. Cause it's like one of those things too, where um, if you would ask, and, and obviously he didn't become a guy that Notre Dame ultimately pursued, but say like Devin Leary at, at NC state, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, he had the big year the, the year before. And then it was like, Oh man, this guy's going to be, you know, maybe one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC, maybe one of the best in the country. Well, he's hurt. And all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden he becomes a name in, in, in the portal. Right. So I don't know. I mean, it, it's, that is something that I think for sure with quarterbacks, um, like you monitor and there's, they, they probably have a list of guys. Like, I mean, I think every program probably has a list of guys that could be options. Um, and you're looking at guys, um, who like, I'm sure there's a lot of quarterbacks that are like, well, you know, if Quinn Ewers and uh, you know, it's Arch Manning, like they're, they're looking at all of these kind of things of like, uh, these depth charts to see who could be their next guy. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. We'll be back on uh Thursday talking more Notre Dame football topics and uh we'll, we'll find we'll find some good content to bring to you guys so thank you everyone for tuning in if you like what you heard of this is your first time hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell that really helps out the show uh have a good rest of the day and we will talk to you again on thursday